Hi everybody. So my name is Shalane and together with me is Gloria and today we'll be doing this topic called CSS Grip for Noobs and the small word there is by noobs. Um, yeah, so a bit of a background story. That's us on the right. Um, that's us together with Hui Jing. Who's sitting right here in front. She's a CSS queen of Singapore. Any CSS questions? <laughs> Please go and look for her. Okay, so this photo was taken uh, two months ago at JS conference, right? Um, and the interesting thing about this photo is that we took this photo after like s over seven glasses of red wine. Okay, and this is the, the evidence of that. Okay, we basically whacked out, I think we, our table was the one that took the most wine at the event. And that's also the reason, right, why we are standing here today. Okay, why do I say so? The moral of the story is that don't make any major decisions on more than two glasses of red wine. <laughs> yeah, so why do I say it's a major decision? I think um, me and Gloria, like, you know, we, we go to meetups and we hear all these devs talking about their, their experiences and they're always talking about very technical topics, right? For us, between us, we only have less than one year of web development or programming even, like between us, right? So it's like, we were like, okay, no, what, what, what could we possibly offer to the community that could be of value? Like, what would you want to hear us speak about, right? So we were like, we were sitting on a topic for really long, couldn't decide on a topic, and then you know what we decided to do? We just decided to just randomly build something. Okay, but we chose to build it in CSS Grid because, I mean, we attended the workshop um, by Hui Singa. So, and then we came up with like two breakable toys in CSS Grid. So, enter the concept of a breakable toy. So, a uh, breakable toy is loosely defined as a program that's built outside of the workplace for the purpose of learning and practicing a new concept. So, this concept was actually introduced to me and us uh, by our coach uh, in Tech Ladies. And it says that experiment, fail, and refactor, which is exactly what we did. You know, we came up with a few crappy versions of, of, of our project. And then we, we basically came up with one version that we were kind of happy about. And then we met up. So we added a feed, I added a feedback in because we met up. And then after that, we engaged in this process of um, mutual code review, as well as uh, giving each other positive and constructive feedback. Um, and it was also then that we finally came up with the topic of CSS Grid for Noobs by Noobs because I think we decided not only to share what we built, how we built it with CSS Grid, but also our learning process um, and our learning journey as beginners to a new, to a new thing. So, okay, um, now I'm going to do a quick intro to CSS Grid layout templates. Uh, can I just get a quick show of hands? How many people actually tinkered with CSS Grid or use CSS Grid for? Just a quick show of hands so that I can see Okay, this is like less than one third of the room. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, okay. So just a quick intro to CSS Grid last. So uh, you can use the analogy of a chessboard. That's, that's what we would like to use. Uh, to define the chessboard is to define the CSS Grid. So the chessboard itself, before you start a game of chess, we always have the board already ready. So that's what we're gonna do with the layouts. And then after that, what we're gonna do is to place the pawns in the, the board itself. So I'll start with uh, HTML markup. And I want to emphasize this because as junior devs, we cannot just go into the website or at least you know, go into any website and look at a CSS grid tutorial, which mostly only consists of CSS properties. Okay, what they do is that they will put the CSS properties, uh, they will show the CSS properties and how they manipulate it, but they don't show the HTML markup behind it. So when I go in, I'm like, you know, I have to still have to take a long time to visualize what the HTML markup looks like. So today, I think we're going to start with something really simple. I call it gridless. Uh, the HTML market markup is just a, a parent container. So just remember this, these two terms, parent container and child containers. So we have a parent container with uh, three nested divs. Uh, we're going to call them the child elements. And right now, you can see the CSS is currently empty. What we have is only the background colors of the child elements to give it the, the colors. Right, so the first step we want to do is to apply the grid layer on the parent container. So we do that by um, using the CSS property display grid. Um, what I want to achieve here is the uh, three columns and three rows. So to do this, we, we use the CSS property grid template columns with an S. Over here you can see three properties which represents the number of columns and each, each of the value actually indicates the size of the columns. Okay. So for the second one is grid template rows. 
over here, CSS provides us with this nice function called repeat. So we don't have to type the size of the columns three times like we did with the columns. Uh, with the columns. Sorry, this is the rows. So the repeat function actually takes in the number of rows as the first value and the size of the row for the second value. And then we'll have yeah, three rows and three columns. OK, so right now, um, over here, we have the, OK, the parent container was already defined early on, right? Right now, we only have the child elements over here. So the first method is the, uh, we want to change the grid column rows and numbers on the child. Uh, take a look at the yellow color uh, div uh, called content. So over here, I think it's a bit small, but it says here grid column one slash three, grid row two slash three. So you can see the yellow color column, the yellow color row is actually on the second column. So we have it from the first, first to the second row. The numbers on top is actually from Firefox. So if you use CSS Grid, I think right now our favorite browser to use for CSS Grid is Firefox because when you open the inspector tool, you can actually apply the grid layout and it will automatically give you the numbers and the grid template areas and you know you can choose and mix and match. Okay, so um, let's say if I want to achieve this effect of just shifting the div from the left to right. All I need to do is to change the grid column from one to three to two to four, right? To achieve this in other, other areas, you probably have to use a float right or something, uh, or padding or, you know, what kind of other CSS properties that you're using. But for grid, you don't have to use that. Okay, so this is the first method, which will be what I'm covering in my demo later. Gloria will cover the second method, which is the grid template areas. Um, so earlier on the method one, right, what we do is that we change the CSS properties in the child itself. Over here, what we do is that we maintain the same layout for the first method, from the first method, and then we define this extra CSS thing called uh, grid template areas. Visually, if you can see, if you can see, you can still see the three columns, the three columns and the three rows. Okay, this is visually what you get on this grid template areas. So to manipulate this, right, you just have to change the values in these grid template areas. This, uh, this method, little Gloria will cover a bit more. Uh, but you can still achieve this effect. So you can see the parent, uh, I mean the parent container, right, the dot actually moves from left to, to right. Okay, so this is the Annie Howley template. So we see, <laughs> see with CSS grid, right, you can achieve this kind of so-called Annie Howley template. Uh, a bit of background story, Annie Howley is a term that Hui Jing devised, okay? <laughs> So she, she wants to trademark it, but we look for www.anyhowley.com by Stigan. So it's not. But this one is called Anyhowley template because you can actually shift the header right down to the footer and then the footer down to the header. And you can use dots right to indicate whatever space that you want in the layouts and stuff. So you can manipulate layouts in a very, very easy way just by changing one CSS property. So I think that's something really uh, useful. OK, so on to my method one uh, of the CSS demo, the grid demo. Um, I think continuation from the story earlier on, um, what happened was that we decided, okay, we've got to build something in CSS Grid, right? So we had to look for inspiration of what to build because it was not planned at all. So after touching CSS Grid for a bit, uh, I started to look for inspiration. So I started to see CSS Grid everywhere, like no kidding. Even the construction site, I can see CSS Grid. Because I was thinking like, how to build that thing in CSS Grid, right? And then after I came across this, uh, when I was walking in Parkway Parade. And this was just an art piece made out of wood hanging outside a store. I was like, hey, this looks quite pretty, you know, they're like nice colors and stuff. So I'm, I'm like, okay, let's try to build that in CSS Grid. So this is the first version that I came out with. I think I have to try to but, uh, Sorry, guys. How to drag this? <laughs> Sorry, uh, technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah. Mirror? Exit from screen. Exit from screen. Exit from screen. Wait. Use Command F1. Just type Command F1. 
Like that? Sorry guys, this is very noob, I know. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. So, this is our original photo on the, on the right. And this photo is the one that, I mean, this is the code that I built on the left. So the original version, right, aesthetically I was quite happy with it. Defining the grid actually took longer than looking for the fonts. The <laughs> fonts were so painful. You know, and I use all Google fonts, so you can imagine how much time I spent on them. Uh, but anyway, the main point was that when I showed Gloria this code, right, and then she said, you know, she gave me some feedback regarding my code, and then the next thing, the next improvement that she told me, right, she was like, you know what, you try and make it responsive, okay? So I show you all now, right, it's not responsive. And that word scares me, you know, as a new developer when I hear the word responsive. See, so now it's not responsive, right? Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. It scares me because it's like, if you don't have, uh, you, you have never touched media queries. I know it has something to do with media queries, but I've never touched media queries before. And then how am I going to do something new in CSS Grid and then do something new in responsiveness, right? So, but she gave me this improvement and I was like, okay, I'm going to take her feedback and I'm going to apply it and then like just try. And then I came up with this. So, breakpoint. And then I decided to go crazy. <laughs> One time. Ah. Okay. Thank you. So, the thing about CSS Grid, right, if you take a look at this, this layout, I mean, the responsiveness, responsiveness is one thing, okay, but look at the, 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 the words itself, right, the, the, the position of the words. With CSS Grid, you can actually manipulate the positions much easier than you could with other kind of, you know, frameworks, like Bootstrap or whatever. Or you probably have to use a bit of JavaScript to do this because you can see like from here, the people actually moves from the third row to the first row. And this is really very easily achieved. I mean, all the code over here, you can look for it in our slides, which we will share. Uh, you can play around with it. Um, yeah, so I think we had some feedback from the previous time that uh, we didn't share code enough from all our developers there. So just to show you how, how easy it is to manipulate stuff, um, in the normal view, I built it in such that this is the normal view. So over here we have, I, I, I use like two columns and 10 rows for this, right? But at a larger breakpoint, you can see this is just a one liner of media query that I used. So at uh, 701 pixels and above, it will actually switch to this, which has 12 columns and nine rows. So this is built with 12 columns and nine rows, okay? Just to demonstrate the Firefox Inspector tool that I was mentioning before this. Uh, so I'm in Firefox now, inspect element. All I have to do is to go to layout and then this checkbox here, I don't know if you can see. This checkbox here, once I, I tick it, you can see all the numbers appearing there. So it's very clearly stating all the numbers of uh, columns and rows that you can actually use to change your layouts about when you're actually developing. So that's very useful. Uh, yeah, so that's it, I think. So I think now I'll hand over to Gloria to continue her part. Oh my god. Okay, where's the slides? Hi everyone, my name is Gloria and I'll be taking over from here. So after all of the things that Shailene shared about CSS Grid, are you guys impressed or like amazed at how amazing like CSS Grid actually is? Yes, right? So like when I was uh, first introduced to CSS Grid by Hui Jing, I was like blown away. I was mind blown because it's I, I didn't know I could do all this stuff with CSS Grid alone. So one of the things that I love about CSS Grid is um, their grid template area. So now I'll show you a demo on how awesome this grid template area actually is. So what I like about this right, is, is not only because I can see it visually, but it's also because it's very efficient. 
So let me show you how what what I meant by that. Okay, so I created this um these grids over here to demonstrate how you can play around with um, grid template area. So, uh, like as you can see from this corner, it's very small, but anyway, it's grid template area. Then after that, I define my grid uh, items over there, just like how um, I want the items to be shown at the live view, which is very simple. So, uh, the alphabets are all jumbled up, as you can see, intentionally, because I'm going to show you how easy is it to just arrange them back alphabetically. Okay. So all I need to do is just change these uh, alphabets over here to the alphabet that, I mean, to the items that I want it to arrange. And then just like that, you can switch around and display whatever you want at the area itself. And um, another thing is that you can name these areas any, any way you want it to be. Like you can like put emojis or you can, really it's like anything. Then that's damn amazing. And also um, you can, uh, dictate how much space you want each item to take. So for example, over here, I want A to take up um, maybe two out of three boxes. So I can easily do that just by uh, specifying what I want in the grid area itself. Yep, so I personally like this a lot because I feel that it's a very powerful property because I can see it visually in the CSS codes itself and then um, explicitly place the items I want in this grid area. That's amazing, right? Easy. Okay. So after all this, have you guys wondered if it's possible to do like nested grids? Nested grids? So nested grids, right? What I mean by nesting grids? So let's say if I have um, a bunch of boxes over here and I want to nest my, uh, maybe like four more boxes inside grid num at box number three. So how I can do that is just simply uh, wrap the, nest the grid items that I want under a div class that I created called nested grid. But currently um, for this nested grid, they don't, the class doesn't have any properties yet. So it will look like this. It will just stack above one another. So now we'll go and define our CSS uh, class for nested grid. And for the nested grid, the first thing you need to do is to display grid. This is very important because if you don't display grid, you know what will happen? It will not work at all. So for rule number one, display grid. And then I'm giving it um, two columns of one FR each. So FR is um, a fractional unit. And one FR means that uh, it's one part of a uh, free space that's available. Um, and then I define it by giving a grid gap of 1M. So what grid, grid gap is, is that it specifies the amount of space between the rows and the columns. So you don't have to do like padding, margins and stuff like that. You just have to give it a grid gap, 1M, and then it will do the magic for you. Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay, so being able to nest grid, right, can come very handy. So being very greedy, I actually made like two breakable toys and this is one of them. It's a set of poker cards. So maybe you guys want to take like a few seconds to, you know, imagine how the grid will be like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think there's like a lot of ways you guys can do it, but this is how I did it. So I gave them like five columns and five rows of one FR each. Um, the reason why I did this is because I want to account for, you know, four, five, six, like there's a lot of hearts, so I can put them um, in the areas that they belong, and it's very easy by doing so. And another thing that I created is this uh, Tetris, just by using grid, CSS grid only. So I, I don't know why I decided to build this. Maybe because, you know, like grids are like blocks, so I, I don't know, this idea just like popped up in my mind. And then I was so curious to find out like, is it even possible to do something like that? And then when I did it, I was so happy because I never knew it's possible. So let me, um, oh, anyway, you don't have to open the code pen since I put it here already. So the, the you know, the, there's like endless possibilities with what you can do with CSS Grid. And 
we have like a few takeaways uh, from doing this. So we both actually benefited a lot from this, uh, you know, doing this thing. And one of which is peer, through like peer code review. Because most of the time when we code and stuff like that, it's usually a very experienced developer who will look through our code and, you know, review them with us. But then this time around, it's someone of the same or similar standard, you know, doing this together. So it was a very different experience because it's, because, you know, it's very different, yet it's very refreshing. As we, because we can see like how we do things differently and we still manage to get it to work. And how we actually picked up CSS Grid is just any howly. Don't think, just do it. Because if you don't do it right, you don't know, you don't really know whether it's possible or not. So if you do it, you try it, you'll be happy to know like it works. So what we did, we learned like, okay, like we learned like the basic stuff, like um, just uh, a simple layout with header, then maybe like body, the sidebar and the footer. Then we started to um, move the items around to see how each property actually works. Then we uh, explored other areas like the grid template area and the uh, nested grids. Yep, so that's actually the end of our talk. Um, we, we would strongly encourage like beginners, you know, like us to, to you know, step out and share your knowledge with the community because we got into this accidentally but we never knew it's so beneficial to both of us in different ways. Um, so I hope that it is also beneficial to all of you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed the talk. If you have any questions, you can ask them after the all talks are done, right? That's cool. All right. So next up, we.